This is Jane Carton, Western Washington University class of 2001, is your commencement speaker. Mrs. Carton was an entrepreneur long before she graduated from Fairhaven College of Interdisciplinary Studies. While she was still a student in the late 90s, she launched an internet services company and developed her Fairhaven concentration in internet entrepreneurship to complement her career. After graduation, she applied her knowledge to her family's investment firm, Saturna Capital, and began building the company's computer network. She later assumed management of the company's website and marketing efforts, and returned to Western to earn an MBA in 2009. She has since taken over the reins from her father and become Saturna's director and president. Mrs. Carton brings a startup approach to her philanthropic endeavors as well. With her husband, Terry, she established the Carton Family Scholarship for Fairhaven students who have dreams of becoming entrepreneurs. Applicants must develop a website showcasing their plans for their business or nonprofit organization. Strong creative thinking is encouraged. Western isn't the only recipient of the Carton support. She and her family are also strong supporters of the Mount Baker Theater, the Pickford Film Theater, and St. Paul's Academy. Please join me in welcoming a distinguished graduate and friend of Western Washington University, Jane Carton. Jane. Thank you, President Shepard. Congratulations, graduates. This is an important milestone for you, and I'm honored to be part of such a significant day. You were all clever enough to find Western Washington University, which is listed among Forbes magazine's top colleges in America, and US News ranks as one of the best values in education. My compliments on an intelligent choice. When I was a student, my main goal was to graduate so I could start living my life without the intrusions of homework and library fines. And now I'm humbled to be back here before you as your commencement speaker. Be careful in life. You age before you get a chance to notice, and the next thing you know, you are supposed to be wise. So pay attention along the way. As an alumnus of both Fairhaven College and the College of Business and Economics at Western, it's important I share something meaningful this morning. After all, you will be representing all of us who have gone before you, like the alumnus who invented Pictionary, or T.J. Martin who won the Oscar for his documentary last year. I've thought a lot about what I want to say, and I would like for it to be practical and not overly cliche. Also, I was told it needs to be less than seven minutes. <laughs> In my mind, university graduation is about your becoming free people for the very first time in your life. <laughs> you did it. You have served the minimum requirements and met your prerequisite for what could be a successful adult life. Now, you can actually be you. Your generation especially has been faced with so many milestones and check marks and expectations of greatness from being focused on one sport only and being state champ in high school to being expected to have changed the world in some meaningful way through your extracurricular philanthropic activities. It's so exciting to consider this newfound freedom that it can also be overwhelming and potentially paralyzing to realize that it's up to you now. Until now, whether you considered yourself a scientist or a teacher or an actor or a humanitarian, it all looked pretty much the same. Classes, homework, group work, and tests. Here today is where that all changes. This is the first time you have the opportunity to truly select for yourself what your every day looks like. The secret I'd like to share with you most is this. You've been given a lot of crappy advice. <laughs> One of the worst pieces of advice I think you've been given is to look for a career with good, quote, work-life balance. That's the saddest piece of advice anyone could ever give you. <laughs> Please do not take that advice. The truth is, look for no such thing as work-life balance. You should be living 100% of the time. Your life is 100% yours, and by, just by saying that you need to balance work with life implies that while you're at work, you are dead. 
If you are dead when you are at work, then please leave that job so that you can live 100% of the time. How do you do that? Well, you find what you actually want to do and do that as a living. Be yourself. Big data means that any potential employer will know whether or not you are actually interested in the subject you profess to have a passion for. And in a few years, they're going to know how many hours you've actually spent browsing the subjects you claim to love. So make it something you really do love. If you spend your time reading beauty or sports blogs or finance articles or posting on healthy cooking sites, start there. People, no doubt, have also been telling you to clean up your Facebook and social media sites and to pretend not to have done any of the irresponsible things you've done. <laughs> Decent advice, but what if you leaned into those so-called irresponsible things and made a life out of them? I mean, clean up Moet makes sense to clean up. Clean up your room, clean up the kitchen, especially if you live with other people. If you are embarrassed by the content of your past posts, try and get rid of them. It's not always possible, but try. Other than that, leave it up. Be you. There is no separation at this point between your virtual life and your biological life. And if you try and live in a schizophrenic way where you are leading dual lives, you're going to make yourself unhappy and confused. There really is only one you. Be that person. When I was here taking, a, taking computer science classes, it was pre-Facebook, and I had my own personal homepage where I put up what would now be called blog entries, but at the time I called them journal entries. After one particularly challenging test, I put, up a te I put up a post that said that I had taken a computer science test where I ended up slapping down some code that would never work on this planet, and then I wrote a your mom a joke into it. I thought, if I can't really answer the question, at least maybe I can get some points for humor. I didn't get bonus points. What I did eventually get was an email from a Google, Google recruiter saying somehow they'd stumbled onto my homepage and wanted to interview me. Who would have thought that by admitting to doing poorly on a computer science test, I would have opened the door to a potential career at Google? I chose a different path. The point is, cleaning your online act up is decent advice, but if you can make a life out of your truly authentic moments, that can be even better. Now is the time to take these risks. In the investment world, we say to be risk on, and that's what you should be right now. I'm a goal-oriented growth at a reasonable price person, but my best advice is to pile on as much risk as you can right now. You will never be at a better time in your life to take the gigantic risks that could lead to an extraordinary life. You have low overhead and few responsibilities. Go ahead and live in a low rent place with five of your friends and try and develop the next great thing together. You have it in you, let it out. Even if you fail in these risky endeavors, you have built identity capital that is invaluable and you will learn far more than you could ever learn at some safe job with decent pay and good benefits. There is no question that risk equals reward. Take advantage of that. Take advantage of your age, your resilience, and your ingenuity. Make mistakes, and I know that this might sound crazy, but dare to get lucky. If you're going to pile on the risk, you're going to need to be lucky. Fortunately for you, I can tell you how to be lucky. Listen up, lucky is an attitude. Lucky is preparation and an ability to notice what's going on around you. When I was getting my MBA here, there was a guy in my class who was really young, and he had gone straight from his undergrad degree to the evening MBA class, which is rare. I asked him where he was working, and he said he was working at a local department store. I remember feeling kind of bad for him and saying, oh, sorry, how's that going? He said, are you kidding? It's awesome. All I do is pay the slightest bit of attention to what's going on around me and take a little bit of initiative, and I'm constantly rewarded. For example, he said, I saw that the CDs and movies were disorganized and I wasn't busy, so I organized them. Nobody else had ever thought to do something so simple. <laughs> I've been promoted three times in two months. <laughs> and now I'm the manager of electronics. <laughs> At this rate, he said, I'm going to be on the company jet by the time I'm 27. <laughs> My classmate knew how to be lucky. He paid attention and took initiative. 
Finally, take advantage of the fact that the amazing degree you're being awarded today means that you know nothing. <laughs> this is great because you have the ability to ask questions. Please don't pretend to know anything. In fact, take extreme advantage of the fact that you can pretend to know nothing. And you can ask any questions you want. Ask them of anyone for any reason, and you will learn things about others and how to do things you never knew and will likely not get the opportunity to ask later in life. Try anything, seriously anything, yourself first. If you have a cracked iPhone screen, which I understand is a little bit of a status symbol in your generation, <laughs> but let's say you want it fixed anyway, instead of taking it to a shop, try getting a fix-it kit and doing it yourself. If you want to eat fresh food, try growing fre fresh food. If you need a website for your business idea, register the domain and launch one. By trying everything yourself, you will be able to understand everything you need to do and how and why and when to bring in someone else. Then you are sure to have everything in your voice and 100% your life. Again, congratulations, graduates of 2013. Go out there, experiment, take risks, do it yourself, don't be afraid to fail, and live 100% of the time. Well done, thank you, Jane.